Hello, hello, hello. There's the music. So, I just got back from the theater. I know I probably should maybe wait a while to, uh... Consider my thoughts on the movie. But... I'll just do it now, because honestly, I don't think my opinion is really going to change much later. Uh... I liked it. It was great. It's what I would want out of a Mario movie, to be honest. What else needs to be said? Um... I saw a thing. I knew that thing. I clapped. Ha <laughs> ha American claps at movie. Do Americans really? All the little like all the little references to all kinds of different Nintendo stuff. What else could you ask for, I guess? Sound sounds lame to say, like, yeah, it's literally I see thing and I I know that thing. Haha, -ha, that's a reference. I get it. I'm a gamer. Haha. -ha. The cake is a lie. That kind of bullshit. But um No really it The movie when it was first announced, Illumination Studios was going to be making the Mario movie. Years back, I was like, oh fucking no, no, anyone but them, oh no, this is gonna be a cheap, shitty hack job, and, you know, when I saw that first trailer, that anxiety, that cloud over my head that this is gonna be an awful movie, kind of dissipated a bit, I'm like, oh, Okay. We had seen who the voice talent was going to be for the entire cast, and the entire internet basically was like, was that a fucking fever dream we just experienced? Like, all these fucking voice actors and Chris Pratt as Mario, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong? What the fuck is this shit? Of course everyone's on board for Jack, ba Jack Black as Bowser, because, you know, he... Let's be real, he's like one of the only few voice talents in this movie that got properly into the character. But, I didn't... I gotta be 100% honest. I didn't really mind Chris Pratt as Mario. Like, I don't know, I just kinda didn't think about it. I kinda was able to shut my brain off and appreciate this as kind of like, uh... It's own thing, because... Hey, I grew up watching the Super Mario Brothers cartoon, and you know... Mario has had different voices. He hasn't always been voiced by Charles Martinet for me personally, so I, I like that old crusty cartoon Mario voice. Which I can't I can't do an impression of, but it's it's a great voice. So when I look at this movie, I kind of like think back to the cartoon. And how all over the place it was. And I know people are like upset. Like, oh, Princess Peach is a girl boss. Oh, she's she's a strong, independent woman that needs no man, kind of thing. And it's like there there seems to be a divide of people that are upset because one, Peach is a girl boss, and two, Peach is still a damsel in distress. And I don't quite understand <laughs> like what the fuck they want. Like just. She's like, she's between, I guess, for the movie, I would say. Or, you know, she's not invincible. She's just as su uh, susceptible to uh, flaw as anyone else. But, I, I guess, I'm, I'm like trying to think, what do people, like, what did they want? Did they want... I shouldn't say that. That's gonna be mean. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll leave that to your imagination, but um, you'll probably know exactly like what I want to say because Hollywood is a, a fascinating place, uh, filled with a lot of 
fucking weird decisions to pander to certain markets and whatnot. So I'm honestly amazed that the Mario movie wasn't really a victim to that much at all. They really just kind of avoided any like dumb political shit. They just played it straight. It's a Mario movie. It didn't need to be anything more than a Mario movie. We had the original Super Mario Brothers movie that um, is infamously bad, but endearing in its own awful, charming way. And everyone hated that because it was a departure that barely resembled the game that it was based on whatsoever. And now here we go, we have a actual Mario movie that encompasses everything we love about Mario that is basically just straight up Mario, video game Mario, the world of the Mushroom Kingdom. We have all the stuff that makes Mario Mario. It's like straight out of a game, kind of. It's... We have that finally, and that's not enough for these people, I guess. They... <laughs> I, I, I should probably like hide the, the, the reviews on the side, but like I, I just wanted to like have that up for illustration of what I think about film critics and what I think about Rotten Tomatoes especially. Uh, I think just those two images side by side probably says a lot about film critics, but this isn't the portion of the stream yet where I am going to just uh, fucking kick the piss out of these film critics, so <laughs> that'll come a little bit later. Ah, much better. Get that ugly shit out of here. Fucking my god. The, the film critics are like, they really are like inhuman. <laughs> They, 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 none of these people reviewing the movie probably are real. They're probably like all AI robots or like pseudonym fake accounts to like, I, I, I don't know. I, I found this very fascinating one. Let me pull it up real quick. Well, we'll kick the piss out of this guy, because he fucking deserves it. For all its detailed worlds, like the Mushroom Kingdom and the Jungle Kingdom, the Nintendo film is just another soulless ploy to sell us merchandise that du doesn't bother to disguise its creativity-starved greed. April 5th, 2023. Top critic, Johnny Olensinski. From the New York Post. And then, you know, I'm looking through this guy's other reviews, and I found this. While a tad too light, as these films often are, nobody is making animated characters as funny or likable or marketable as the minions. This is like the rise of Gru. June 30th, 2022, so, same guy, same animation studio, I guess he's not much of a Mario fan, but, man, he really, uh, <laughs> I mean, do I really have to say anything? Look at this shit, side by side, like, this guy, this, I refuse to believe this guy is a real human. This has to be like some troll that is just like grifting as a movie critic. <laughs> he he's not real. He he he's he's like a fucking fake AI movie critic or something. How how the how the fuck do you put your own foot in your mouth that fucking bad? <laughs> a year before the Mario movie. You say the mar you praise the minions for being so marketable, and then you call fucking the Mario movie like a a ploy to sell merchandise. I can tell you this guy probably bought the minion fart gun. God, fucking 
what a work. What, what a... What a... What a clown world we live in. <laughs> ah. Okay, let me... My thoughts about certain things. Eh, the voice talent. Chris Pratt, you know, wasn't that bad. Um, voice of Luigi did fine. Uh, I'm not really a celebrity person. I don't really remember a whole lot of names, so... He, he did great as Luigi. Princess Peach, you know. Princess Peach. Uh... Fine. Seth Rogen. I fucking hate that guy. Any other... Anyone else could have played Donkey Kong, honestly. Cranky Kong's voice? Eh. Not good casting, either. I feel like the, the, the Kongs were miscast. I would have, you know, like anyone else, I would have rather seen Charles Martinet voice Mario. Because he deserved it. But they want to market this movie with star power. And, you know, it's going to be on its way to be the best-selling video game-based movie of all time, probably. And I think it deserves it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sonic fans. You had your movie. But... Listen, you may have got in the studio to deny us the ugly Sonic cut. But... That first Sonic movie, you got a decent looking Sonic, but <laughs> it's it's still a bad movie. Like I would say the Mario movie makes the first Sonic movie like it's it's essentially compare Super Mario Galaxy to Sonic 06. And that's what I think of the two movies side by side. I'm sorry, but it's true. <laughs> so, that being said... I'll leave that right there for a while. Ah... <laughs> uh, Oh fuck! <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, Agent Red Jackal, for the raid. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. I, I am uh, discussing the Mario movie more so, just sitting in a room by myself, like a madman, talking about the Mario movie that I just got back from seeing. Hey Magister, hey Reptile Hand, hey Retro, hey Lazarus. Let me do a shout out for the. Jackal. I know you're there, Mechanic Cat. Go follow Jackal. They're they're really cool. Hello, Hex and Hell. And yeah, welcome to the stream too, Mechanic Cat. It was uh You were... Games and Demos. I'm... What was the name of that one game that Shin Megami Tensei like, but it's like an indie game and it's like kind of modeled after PS1 graphics, I think? Monkey music. And yeah, Mechanic Cat, it's an early stream because I, I just got back from watching the Mario movie, so... I just wanted to like, you know... Make fun of shitty critics because <laughs> I've been looking at the reviews I've been looking at what people are saying on Mongolian basket weaving forms about the Mario movie and like all these like fucking people like I'm pretty I'm pretty certain it's all just like schizo posters that like are really big Sonic fans and like they want to like they want to see the Mario movie bomb so bad and like they're clutching that like that that Sonic movie is like, be it, no, Sonic has to be the king, he has to have a good movie, he's gotta have something better than Mario. But I don't think that's the case here. I, I honestly think the Mar the Super Mario Brothers movie was very serviceable and very well done. 
Kobloon's Curse. Yeah, yeah. How you been liking that? It looked interesting. Like, uh... I... I had seen posts about it on Twitter for a while, and, like, I can't remember if I... Oh, thank you for the follow, Lazarus. I, I don't remember if I, like, uh... I was gonna suggest it, but I, I saw that you had already, like, found it. So I was like, oh, okay. I don't, I don't need to post anything about it in your Discord. <laughs> Yeah, um, as I was saying, like, comparing the, the first Sonic movie to this Mario movie, it feels like Sonic 06 versus Mario Galaxy, honestly. <laughs> you can remove Mario from any scene of this movie, and you'll probably be able to tell it's a Mario movie. But if you did that to Sonic in the first Sonic movie, I don't think you would be able to tell it was the Sonic movie. <laughs> yeah, I I have that opinion pretty much, Mechanic Cat, that I think that the Mario movie is going to age way better than the Sonic movie. For what for starters, it's fully animated. And the Sonic movie, you know, it's partially live action. They may have made Sonic look better, but the script for it is still your typical thing go animated thing goes to the real world and it's an ugly CGI animal and boring human subplot and side characters you don't give a shit about. <laughs> But I, I, I shouldn't really be shitting on the Sonic movie too much. It's just funny because I've taken note of just how much like anti-Mario movie people are like kind of like speaking up and like a lot of uh, <laughs> Sonic fans are just like, they're desperate for Sonic to get a win at anything. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, you know, Sonic did good. Now it's Mario's turn and they don't want to play nice. They, they want the Mario movie to fail. <laughs> so here I am, the Nintendi that I am, defending the honor of the Mario movie. But no, it really was everything I would hope for out of a video game movie. Straightforward, to the point. I know everyone's memeing on it, the, the voice casting. I agree in certain ways that, yeah, it could have been done better, but honestly, really good. Didn't try to be anything other than a Mario movie, and a love note to everything Nintendo, and you know, me having grown up playing Mario games all through my life. Uh, getting any small reference, ref, ugh. getting any small references puts a, a big dumb smile on my stupid man-child face as I'm watching this movie. Say it looks like a cozy time at the theater. My inner kid would be screaming to see cutscenes for two hours straight. VA was too painful or decent. Uh, voice acting was decent. Like you kind of just turn your brain off, and like I said earlier, like watching the old Mario cartoon. Like Mario has had different voices in the past. I would have liked the Charles Martinet Mario as the actual movie Mario, but. I'll just see this thing as like it's its own Mario universe. So now there could be three Marios. There could be the Mario Super Show Mario, there could be the video game Mario, and there could be the Illumination Studios Mario. Usually when I see any sort of movie, I don't think about who is playing what character, unless it's like blatantly obvious. like. The elephant in the room is, you can't ignore the fact that Jack Black is playing Bowser, but he does a, he, he's, he's the best voice talent out of the entire crew, honestly. He, he fits the role. That being said, there is a song that Bowser sings about Peach and it sucks. It sucks. I'm sorry. Uh... It... They had one job and they fucked it up. 
Now, the soundtrack for the movie is good. A lot of the Mario melodies, a lot of incorporation of Mario music into moments of the film. And it's done in such a nice little way. Where if you notice it, you'll notice it. But then... There's pop music. Uh, California Girls does not start playing, fortunately, but... There's just some random pop songs that, like... They don't belong in the movie. I don't know why they felt the need to really put it in there. I, I guess that's like Illuminations meddling or whatever. I would like a cut of the movie that would remove all this shit, personally. Hopefully on the DVDs, or like... I don't know. It's... I won't say what songs they were, in case anyone wants to actually go and see this movie. Which I'm sure everyone wants to go and see this movie, but like, maybe they're like, Oh, this is gonna... it's gonna be so crowded, and like... Funny enough, me and my brother went at 1.15 p.m. We were in a giant empty... <laughs> it's pretty much just me and him, and I think about like maybe eight other people. Maybe, maybe around 12 or so. It was strange, we had this giant auditorium all to ourselves, but... We had those free movie tickets, and we were like, okay, well, we'll, we'll get the best, like, we'll get the, the super sounding auditorium that has, like, the best uh, sound quality available and all that. So, you know, it's free. We're not paying for it. Why the fuck not? That probably helped filter out some people. So, yeah, I didn't have to worry about any jackass sitting next to me and uh, coughing and farting or, like... Children screaming the entire time. It was a very pleasant experience. Uh, but I guess living in the suburbs, that is to be expected. Uh, I can only imagine what maybe a theater is like in like a major city. Probably uh, people screaming everywhere, kids crying. Uh, all kinds of different foods and smells just wafting through the air, making it a very unpleasant experience. I never have that problem with movie theaters. Been going to the same one for years, and you know, I never really have any issues with it. Early showings usually have no one. I was looking at seating, and a lot of it was filled after 5.30 p.m. Yes, if you, are, if you really want to see a movie, try and do it early in the day, because being an early person, a morning person, is often a rarity, I want to say. Everyone else wants to do everything at night. You can do it early, do it early, and you'll you'll miss the entire crowd. By the time uh, we got out of the auditorium and all that, and the movie was over, I saw the lobby, like, filling up, so... I, I think kids were still in school, or maybe had just gotten out of school or something, and... You know, straight to the movie theater as they're going. No, here is going to be hell. I will wait to go on a Monday afternoon. Last time I went to watch something here, there was a whole family eating fast food in front of me. Like Big Macs, fries, ice cream, it was pain. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I guess that's a thing in Brazil, huh? They probably, like, just allow you to bring in McDonald's. Uh, they don't really do that here in the United States, like, usually they don't want you bringing in, like, food, but, like, usually a lot of people, uh, myself included, have, uh, spent years and years wearing big puffy jackets and just, like, sneaking in sodas and candy through <laughs> my pockets and all that. They don't allow you to- okay, they- so they just don't- they don't fucking reinforce it, like, Honestly, I, if I had the balls to go get McDonald's and walk through that door <laughs> and see if they would stop me, I, I should do it. That's 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 that that is a funny thing. Like, okay, are they actually gonna let me take McDonald's into the theater? Uh, they're probably not paid enough to even fucking care, so they probably would just let me go eat McDonald's in the auditorium. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, yeah, we're all we're all wage slaves, uh, trapped in a cage.
usually just eat before popping in the theater. I see, I see. I usually like to eat after I see a movie. I'll eat something light, like a, a light snack before the movie. I don't really, I'm not really much of a popcorn person ever since I had braces. I, uh, you know, I got conditioned to like not really want to eat popcorn a lot because, you know, easy to get stuck and a pain in the ass to get out. Kernels and all that too. It's just, uh, it's not one of my favorite foods anymore. It never was really a favorite food, but like it kind of just destroyed the movie tradition of eat popcorn. Here, it's, uh, it's time to remo remove the Mario movie poster in Sonic. Hmm. What can I put up? Actually... Put the, we'll put the poster over there. I'm usually not a fan of popcorn, but I don't mind getting theater popcorn. There's something magical about theater popcorn. I just don't know if maybe it's just like... It, it, they just like dump salt and butter all over it. Maybe maybe the fact that it's like maybe stale as hell tastes better. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if someone else I'm going with gets some popcorn... I'll, I'll I'll take a I'll I'll take a few uh, I'll I'll take a bit of it. <laughs> I was just ah uh, can I have some popcorn yeah yeah yeah. But I'm not gonna fucking pay thirteen dollars for that shit. I could wait after the theater and then I'll get something very nice and filling. But in this case, I didn't. I ate. I did end it. I I I did. I did eat some Chinese food before the theater, uh, before the movie. So I, I guess I went against my thing, but it, I wasn't the one driving this time. So if I was by myself and driving, I definitely would have uh, probably went and got something nice and just go uh, sit in a park and eat food and reflect on the Bing Bing Wahoo Man movie. What was I ta- what was I last talking about? Well, I got sidetracked. I got sidetracked. Yeah, chips and soda are a good thing to bring in. I'm always like a little bit conscious about making a lot of noise when I'm eating. But the other people around me usually like, they... <laughs> They bring in the most crinkly food possible, and the entire time, it's just... There have been movies where this is all that I hear for like a good 15-20 minutes until they run out. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's absolute. <laughs> there, there are times where you just you just get a very bad like draw of the cards, and you get like one or two people in the auditorium that are loud as fuck, have screaming children, or <laughs> usually the problem sorts itself out. But yeah, no, really, like this me seeing the Mario movie today, I didn't have any issues. I didn't have any problems. Everything went perfectly. Me and my bro just sitting there and watching the Mario movie. It's it's perfect. Two Italian brothers watching two Italian brothers on screen. Excellent experience. Movie was everything I would have wanted out of a Mario movie. And that apparently isn't enough for some critics out there. So, let's look at some of <laughs> the quote-unquote critics and what they are saying about the Mario movie. So I didn't prepare anything 
beforehand. I got some stuff here, so this is gonna be a little... Having a browser open would probably be easier to do this, but... I'm gonna- I'm gonna do it my own weird, stupid way. So we got James Vernier. <laughs> Mamma Mia! That's racist, you can't say that. You're appropriating my Italian heritage. The narrative is very thin. Mario and Luigi have not much personality beyond the cliches. Watching a film about the game, this is very different from playing the game. I bet this guy has never played a fucking Mario game in his entire life. While my brother was in Boston, he brought in either a sealed beef stew or other dinner, I forgot. He unsealed the thermos stuck Tupperware and he said that you could see the steam rise to the top of the- th oh my god. <laughs> People bring in like the craziest shit in the theaters. The, what the fuck rating is this? I'm not a movie person, so I don't really like understand what this is referring to. Justice for Bob Hoskins. Wait, what is Bob... Oh, oh, okay. He was the original... He was the original Mario in that movie. Wait, was he? Wait, um... Yeah, yeah, Bob Hoskins was the original live action. So this guy right here has the gal to say... Fucking... 1993's Mario Bros. movie was better than this movie? Even though everyone up till this point of time has been making fun of that movie? Like... What fucking alternate universe did I wake up in? Where suddenly like people like that shitty movie so much after making fun of it forever. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I mean, I like it. I like it. It's I like it for all like it's an interesting look at like how out of touch someone was when making a movie and like how not to make a video game adaption movie. It had its charms to me, but like I feel like everyone else like in all seriousness would hate that movie and now here we have this fucking uh he 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 just has to <laughs> All right. Well, let's 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 move on to the next. While the details are meticulous, the attitude is all wrong. Trading the simple, unaffected charm that has served the character so well since his introductions for a snarky and fatuous air that leans hard on winking humor and bland, hackneyed irony. Uh. I mean, people say Mario doesn't have much of a personality. So, what were you expecting? They weren't just gonna make like a fucking hour and a half silent movie where Mario goes, Wahoo! And then, you know, just fill in the stuff with like random shit happening, I guess. Is that what this guy wanted? Like, I expected some sort of Hollywoodization with this movie. But... Uh... <laughs> I, I, I don't know, like... This is just funny to me, looking at all these critics. Jeff York says, 
It's pitched to diehard fans, but one shouldn't need the Nintendo cheatbook to know what's going on here. What do you mean Nintendo cheatbook? Like, fucking literally, everyone know who's fucking Mario. Any of the fucking, like... It, it's basically like every Mario game encompassed in the one. It's... It refer... If, it references so many different games from across the generations. There's a little something for everyone. You at least know all the main characters. Everyone knows Bowser. Everyone knows Peach. Everyone knows Toad. Donkey Kong. Luigi. The movie has eye-popping production values, but as a genuinely compelling narrative, this adaption feels wholly off its game. And that's where I disagree. I feel like it needs to be exactly what it is. It doesn't have to try to be anything more than Mario. Yeah, critics have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. I'm pretty sure I have fucking pretentious opinions about things, and then everyone probably rolls their eyes and like, what the fuck are you talking about? You don't know shit, Rick. And like, maybe, I don't know. I just like things. I'm not, I'm not a good critic. Yeah, my microphone's peaking a lot. Readjusted a bit. Or maybe I'm just like just talking very loud and passionately right now. I don't I don't know. Hayden Mears says, There are only so many power-up blocks training montages and disjointed world building a script can support before it just feels like a game we can't play. Sadly, the Super Mario Bros. movie reaches that threshold quite early in its 90 minute runtime. The movie looks fantastic. <laughs> I, I have the thumbnails running on the TV so it's like uh, not too distracting right now. Uh, I would normally have the, the commercials on, but I was like, okay, this is this is, this is is going to be a more of a talking stream, so let's uh, not distract too much. I, some of them probably are distracting, like the fucking Kirby one. I mean, how many movies have training montages and disjointed world building, like, lately? It's like, isn't that every fucking Marvel movie currently out? All movies feel like a video game we can't play. I feel like a lot of people see all these like action movies and they go, Oh man, that's just like a video game. I, I wish that was a video game. They should make a video game about this. It'd be so cool. And it's like... Just fucking play a Mario game. <laughs> we wanted to see how they would adapt a video game into a movie. And they did perfectly serviceable work at that. Jonathan W. Hickman says, The Super Mario Bros. movie is a narrative failure. There's little to no emotional connection between the characters and their plight, motivations, and ultimate objectives. I don't know, Bowser was like pretty fucking intent on marrying Peach. You could tell he was really down bad for Peach. He, he really loves her. And Peach is, you know... He's like, oh, well... I have my kingdom, and Bowser is going to destroy my kingdom, so I don't want that to happen. And Mario, of course, has to find his brother and save his brother, so they all... There is emotional connections. They all have motivations and ultimate objectives. I don't know what this guy's... I don't know what movie he's talking about, honestly. I remember days where every movie has a video game. It wasn't good. Yeah, I remember those days too. Um, we are far past those days, fortunately. Harris Dang, Impulse Gamer. 
With its suffocating reverence to its source material, the Super Mario Bros. movie is unfathomably incapable of guile. It doesn't even feel fair to judge. It is a movie because it does not even feel like one. It feels like a feature length ad for Nintendo. A feature length ad for Nintendo. I mean. Fair? How many, how many movies are a feature length ad for toys? <laughs> I, hmm, Rotten Tomato Mario Movie, Harris Dang, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna fucking find this guy's profile, see what he says about some other movies. Okay, so Let's see if I can find any funny things in his reviews. And not seen anything really too funny. Pretty sure all the like, I think this guy just hates Mario, because everything he has reviewed, like he's giving like ninety percent scores, and like there's very little he's actually like rated poorly. So he might just be one of those like schizophrenic Sonic fans, in which I'm looking right now and I see Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and he gave that a 69%. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 may be lighter than air, and it will race out of one's mind as soon as one leaves the theater. However, it provides sufficient amounts of fun while it lasts, and it's miles ahead of other video game film adaptions. Yeah, okay. I think this guy definitely is a uh, Sonic fan schizo. Ah, uh, he, he didn't like Clifford the Big Red Dog. That was a movie that happened, huh? Let's see what he had to say about... Surely he reviewed the first Sonic movie. Nah, let's, let's, let's stop looking at this uh, idiot's resume. <laughs> These are film critics. They they aren't deep people. I mean, let me put this guy up in the corner. I feel like he deserves to be up in the corner for this segment. Joshua Starn says, Colorful, energetic, and empty as a sugar-laden breakfast cereal, the Super Mario Bros. movie is the kind of kid film that gives kid films a bad reputation. I, I don't know. I, I've seen plenty of worse kids' films. I don't really get where this guy is coming from. The movie looks great. It's full of action, it's full of adventure. It's got no politics to it. It's got nothing like offensive that kids can't watch. I feel like it, it hits all the marks of like a actual good children's film. This is like, if I ever have kids, I'm going to show them this movie. I'm going to let them watch this movie, and I'm going to let them play Mario games. 
and maybe, you know, hope that, like, they enjoy Mario as much as I did. I can't say that about, like, a lot of other shit, like fucking Marvel movies or even most modern animated Disney movies. Like, I can't, there's, like, even a lot of shit on television that's meant for children. It's like, I, don't, I, I wouldn't even want to show that to my kids, because, like... There's, there's just so much shit that gives, like, kids film bad reputations, like, like you want to let your kid, like, fucking watch family finger videos on YouTube all day or something? Come on. There's worse things than the fucking Mario movie. Before you continue, you should check his review of Birdemic 3. Wait, who's review for Birdemic 3? Link it right now. Link, I need to, I'll, I'll read it, I'll read it. Chris Swain. The Super Mario Bros. movie is like the fruit striped gum. It's super colorful and eye catching, but it seems to instantly lose its flavor and charm. The film is surprisingly dull when it isn't slapping you in the face with rainbow colored nostalgia. Uh, bounding into comics, Chris Swan. Let's see what, uh. I expect that this guy like just be reviewing nothing but like comic movies and he's probably not much of a gamer. He he gave the Bob's Burger movie, 88%. And he gave uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers an 80% too. I, I, I don't know about this guy's opinion. I, I, he gave Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness a 74% too. Yeah, fuck off, buddy. <laughs> Harris Dang, Harris Dang. He didn't like it, but gave it a, a 3.5 to Birdemic. My god. Yeah, it's like, a lot of these people's reviews just don't really, like, fucking match up to the fucking other shit that they review, honestly. Nostalgia's bad unless it's things that I like. Tedious in its articulation of the obvious, the Super Mario Bros. movie seems both precious about and unsure of its properties' co coherence. Wait, what the f- what? What fucking alien language did I just read? Tedious in its articulation of the obvious, the Super Mario Bros. movie seems both precious about and unsure of its properties' coherence. I don't know, the fucking movie seemed pretty coherent to me. Goombas were Goombas, Koopas were Koopas. Bowser wanted to fucking marry Peach. Mario and Luigi are brothers. All the power-ups did exactly what they do in video games, like... What, what is this guy saying nothing's coherent? I don't know, am I... Am I stupid or is this guy like saying nonsense? Yeah, it just literally seems like this guy is like, Hey, I, I'm, I'm saying these big fancy words. I'm going to sound so smart, but it's like, it, it doesn't make sense. It just sounds like he wants to use big words that sound smart. <laughs> He's, he probably doesn't know shit about Mario. Ian Thomas Malone. Super Mario Bros. movie seems genuinely concerned with putting on an authentic experience for children and their parents alike. The first rate production values almost redeem this bland, soulless blockbuster. 
I mean, bitch, have you fucking... Have you seen a movie in the past decade? It's all bland and soulless. <laughs> uh, let me find this bitch's uh, reviews. She gave Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, a 90%. John Wick Chapter 4, 94%. 50% The Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Ant-Man and the Wasps, Quantum Mania, 47%. Uh, she gave a Titanic in 1997, which is weird, reviewing it fucking February 10th, 2023. <laughs> Avatar The Way of the Water is 76%. Mickey, The Story of a Mouse, 89%. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, 84%. Okay, fucking opinion discarded. You, uh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, whenever I look at these like fucking critics page and I see Wakanda forever like fucking above 80 or 90% then I just like discard their opinion instantly the film is plastered with references easter eggs and just about everything you can imagine from the game so much that the story is bare bones as Mario simply jumps from one colorful screen to the next without care in the world Isn't that just like every adventure movie, though? Like, set piece after set piece? Character goes from one place to another? Isn't it also a good thing that maybe movies have more than just like one setting that they could take place in? That like you have to finally craft a bunch of cool set pieces, too? Like, I, I feel like that, like, the fact that a lot of locations you could tell, like, these are a part of different Mario games, like, uh... You have the Sand Kingdom from, uh, Mario Odyssey. You had bob Battlefield. You had the Donkey Kong Country, literally. The film is plastered with fractions of Eastern and just about everything you can imagine from the game. So much as the story is bare bones, I mean... Does this guy maybe think that because you see a question mark block, that is supposed to be an Easter egg? Because there there are plenty of like little Easter eggs all throughout the movie, but they're completely inoffensive, and they're all very well done and cute in my honest opinion. Like actual Easter eggs, a gamer will be able to see and go, oh, cool. I recognize that. I am a Nintendo fan. And then, like, people who don't know will just see that and, you know, shrug. I don't know what that means, but I, I guess things are happening. Like, why is it so bad that there's Easter eggs about Nintendo stuff in a Nintendo movie? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Matt Rodriguez. Uh, Get the fuck out of here. Richard Krauss. The theatrical experience of watching the Super Mario Bros. movie is essentially like playing the game without the inconvenience of actually having to play the game. It comes with all the charm of an unplugged Game Boy. An unplugged Game Boy. Have you ever fucking touched a Game Boy in your goddamn life? Those things take fucking batteries, you idiot. <laughs> Unless you mean like you're plugging in the power adapter to a wall and keeping that shit plugged in the player Game Boy. In which case, yeah, I used to do that all the time. But if you let that power wire come out of the Game Boy in the slightest, kiss all your game progress goodbye because your, your Game Boy would just shut down and restart, so... <laughs> Uh, I learned not to play Pokemon that way, but it comes with all the charm of an unplugged Game Boy. Like, something tells me this guy never actually used a Game Boy. <laughs> he, he don't know what a fucking Game Boy is. Maybe he means a Super Nintendo? This is just like a, a non-gamer trying to act like he knows shit about video games, I think. 
the theatrical experience of watching the Super Mario Bros. movie is essentially like playing the game without the inconvenience of actually having to play the game. That's supposed to be a bad thing? You're saying like watching the movie would be like playing the game, but like you're not playing the game? So you mean like it accomplished everything it's supposed to accomplish by being a video game? A movie based off of a video game? <laughs> ah. My god. Any dumb motherfucker can do this as a job, and it, it hurts to think about. Pe they, these guys get paid to say this ridiculous shit. The gorgeous visuals perfectly capture vast video game levels with a sense of grandiosity and awe. The jokes aren't half bad either. But once the film has raced by, the whole spectacle feels empty and safe. IP management at its most careful and bland. Um, no. Miyamoto was involved in this. You can't say the same about, you know, a lot of other people who actually created the property that's being adapted into a movie. The fact that they let Miyamoto come in and make demands about the thing he created and keeping it as safe as possible so that Mario isn't miscasted as a, uh, hmm, how do I word this? I'm trying to word this in a way that's politically correct. <laughs> you can imagine what I want to say. You can imagine what I want to say. Uh, we see this happen often with a lot of movies. Uh, taking a character that we like, and it doesn't look anything like the character with the way that they cast a... Uh, mm, let's just leave it at that. Uh, Mario wasn't 500 pounds. And he wasn't a woman. Fit movie. Zero out of ten. Way to play it safe, Nintendo. <laughs> uh, let me stretch and uh, take a sip of this drink. The Goombas from the OG Mario movie were great. That's something I gotta say about this, though. I don't know if this, this is really spoilers or not, but, um... Goombas didn't really have any role in this movie. They show up in some scenes, but... They don't... I can't remember a point where they actually do anything. It's usually just all Koopa Troopas, and... Buzzy Beetles and... Well, actually, did the Buzzy Beetles do it? Eh. There's a decent spread of all the Mario enemies. There are some that get left out, obviously. The Koopa Troopas are the most fitting. So I guess maybe they wanted to go with that. But... Considering what Illumination does and what they're famous for, which is like minions, then the Mario movie is like the one IP they could get away with where they could just literally make an army of characters that all look the same and it's actually fitting for once to have a bunch of characters that are just copy pasted. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. This guy wants Mario to be like 500 pounds disabled in a wheelchair and fucking who else knows. I, I like for once that an IP actually resembles the IP that it's supposed to be based on and it's not like some weird bastardization. I'm sorry if that's ableist or whatever, but like, I don't know. I've, I've just seen too many characters just... 
fucking go through this weird transformation that they're, they're just not even the character they're supposed to be based on anymore, and I'm kind of sick of that in media and cinema and comics and cartoons. It's, it's time for a property to actually resemble what it's supposed to be. You don't go to a movie that is called Blue, and then immediately the screen flashes red. If that makes any sense. It's based off of a, a funny comic that I should have had on hand. I love the hell out of it. It's like, it's just a guy sitting in front of a television, and it's like, brand new movie coming out this summer, Blue. And then the guy's like, man, I love Blue. And then it, the next panel is like him going to the theaters and everything. And then like he's in a seat, he's got popcorn, he's ready for the movie to pop on. And then like the picture on the big screen comes up and it's like text blue in the center. But the entire screen itself is red. And then the next scene after that is him just like with a very concerned big like... Huh? Huh? Like a... I can't do it with my model because my... Browning doesn't get picked up very well with webcams. He's like sitting there with like the biggest, most disappointed look on his face, and it's the funniest shit. Cause it just shows like how out of touch these corporate meddlings are when it comes to like movies based on properties that people actually like. All we need is a legitimate story to flesh out among the colors. Maybe next time. I don't know, I thought I thought the story was fine. It's Mario. Mario's known for, you know, not being very story heavy. It's like to think Koopa Troopas are easy to identify, like you made some minor changes on the character, you can immediately tell them apart. If the Koopas were in an eye patch with Goombas, I think it would be hard to do. Uh, I don't know, I, th I think just having the, the Goombas there would just be great, because... Mm. You don't really need to tell them apart. They're just... They're famously known as a part of the Koopa army. It's just weird to me that, like, the, the Goombas just... Kind of took a back seat in this movie for some reason. Alison Wilmore, New York Magazine Vulture. It's all despairingly wrote, aside from bursts of weird vitality whenever the film veers into action out of the games. More of that fucking alien speak. Do you even know what a fucking video game is? <laughs> it's all despairingly wrote. Wrote, mechanical or habitual repetition of something to be learned. A poem learned by rote in childhood. Rote learning is a memorization technique based on repetition. The method rests on the premise that the recall of repeated material becomes faster and more one repeats it. Some of the alternative of rote learning included meaningful learning associated learning to blah 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 blah. Like a She's saying it's mechanical, it's repetitive. Yeah, she's just like speaking some alien shit. <laughs> she, she, she's she's another one of those reviewers just that's trying to like use big fancy words. But like she's she ultimately like I guess means nothing. Cause that that's how I read her her review is it means nothing. She's just saying the movie's repetitive, but she's trying to make it sound more fancy than... Uh, get the fuck out of here. This isn't a movie, it's a checklist of fan expectations. Yeah? So like, making... making a movie that fans like... is a bad thing? If the fans... expect Mario... out of a Mario movie? Are they wrong for expecting that?
Let's see what he has reviewed. Yep, yep, here we go. 84% Black Panther, Wakanda forever. <laughs> Opinion instantly disregarded. <laughs> this next one is funny. It narrowly misses being a list of fan winks. Full review in Spanish. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, enter joke here. Welcome to the stream. I am taking the piss out of a uh, fucking critics of the Mario movie. And how it seems like uh, they possibly just didn't want to bother paying any of these people off to give them good reviews because they knew fans were going to like the movie and it was a Mario movie and it was actually going to sell. And it was exactly what a Mario fan would actually want out of a fucking Mario movie. So you got these fucking grown adults that parade around as uh, quote unquote critics. And this movie offends them for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, full review in Spanish. move this up a bit not cover myself up the glib literalism w with which it applies cinematic narrative to video games abstractions can't hold a candle to the wrenching pathos and self-discovery of a night on the track with real-life loved ones and Mario in his original medium You're speaking that alien language again. You're just using big words to sound smart. Like, what are you saying? Like, it can't compare to the video games? I'm kind of like speechless on this one. Next one. <laughs> yeah, they, I don't want to go visit some website. I, I don't know how to. I, I don't speak Spanish. I don't, I don't know what the fuck it's gonna say. <laughs> Mama mia, the narrative is very thin. Mario and Luigi have not much personality beyond the cliches. Watching a film about the game, this is very different from playing the game. Well, yeah, it's like it's a fucking movie. What do you expect? Did, wait, didn't I already fucking? Did I read this guy's thing already? I, I can't fucking remember. Am I am I repeating some of these? I don't think so. Yeah, there's the justice for Bob Hoskins. Yeah, I think I'm in repeating territory now. Let's let's put this one on the stream for a bit. Just because this this one's funny. I, I find this one funny. The Super Mario Bros. movie seems genuinely concerned with putting on an authentic experience for children and their parents alike. The first straight production values almost redeem this bland, soulless blockbuster. The... 
Tai... Uh, tai... Uh, fucking... I can't pronounce that word. Holy shit. Come on. It's me slapping myself in the fucking face. So learn, learn how to speak English, Rick, you dumbass. This is your only language you fucking speak. <laughs> the diachometry of the juxtaposition of Mario and Luigi in their new environment is entirely nonsensical. It is far disconnected from any grounded reality of how Brooklyn Plumber would behave in such a far-fetched pocket dimension. 9 out of 10. It has a little something for everyone, IGN. There was a funny IGN review, and I, I'm not gonna go get that one. <laughs> I think that's the end of this segment right here, so... Fucking... Hack fraud. Fire em. Seriously. If you weren't here to see, if you weren't here to see this one, oh, whoops, that one's backwards. Cause uh, okay, the original image I placed was uh, backwards. For all its detailed worlds, like the Mushroom Kingdom and Jungle Kingdom, the Nintendo film is just another soulless ploy to sell us merchandise that doesn't bother to disguise its creativity, starved greed. But it's kind of Mario, basically. <laughs> sell us merchandise that doesn't bother to disguise its creatively starved greed. Meanwhile, a year ago, the fucking Minions movie. Rise of Gru. While a tad too light as these films often are, nobody is making animated characters as funny or likable or marketable as the minions. Top critic. Daikamo tree. Okay, that's how you that's how you say okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mechanic Cat. <laughs> Fucking th this is insane. This guy is inhuman. He, he doesn't exist. He's not real. Human hands did not write both of these reviews. So I guess maybe I could go a little bit more in detail about the movie, which is kind of like spoiler territory, I guess. <laughs> Actual AI-generated man. So if you have any plans on seeing the movie... I, I guess at this point, just mute it, or just uh, tune out of the stream, I guess. I'll go into a little bit more detail about it, and like some of the stuff that I liked in it, and some of the stuff that stood out to me. So, spoilers will be on the bottom of the screen. Uh, when that thing is gone, then you can like, unmute me or whatever. I think uh, I'll be wrapping the stream up pretty soon after I, like, uh talk a little bit more about it. Anyways, five, three, two, wait. <laughs> did, I, did I just prove I can't count on, well, fuck. Five, four, three, two, one. Spoiler time. Okay, if you're not muted, I, I, that's your fault. <laughs> okay. I thought that the start to the movie was really cute. You actually see Mario's parents and extended family. And the relation Mario has with his brother, like, it feels genuine. Just him and Luigi kind of like sticking by each other, even through the toughest times. I expected the way that the film would begin would be they would be a part of the wrecking crew and like working under Spike. But Spike is just kind of there and they build the whole like, oh yeah, you used to work for me but you quit to uh, open up your own plumbing business and shit. And basically he's just like a big stupid dumb bully. 
So that, that was a little disappointing. They could have did better with that. Then they had Charles Martinet's character pop up, which is basically like a a goofy Italian guy that kind of looks like the old classic Mario, and like he does the pose, he jumps, he goes uh, wahoo or woohoo or you know that kind of thing. He's like playing the arcade game and everything. And then also Charles Martinet does the voice of Mario's dad, who is also kind of like there's a little bit of like a weird daddy issues subplot to it where his father is like uh you, you don't quit a decent job to go chase crazy dreams and all that but like my father was a plumber and plumbers they they are always in demand being a plumber isn't a profession that is going to go away or ever not be needed. They... they can make hella bank. Having a license to be a plumber and technician and all that stuff is incredibly useful and I kind of regret not going in to learn any of that stuff. I could have been a... It's a dirty job, but it pays well and it's always needed no matter what. As long as humans exist, we will need running water. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by something. <laughs> what was I talking about? What was I talking about? I got, I got that, uh... I got that dumb brain. <laughs> oh yeah, plumber. Okay, yeah, Mario. Mario's father is like, uh, like, ah, uh, you, you dragged your brother into this and all that, and it's like, Mario just, you know, he get he gets up, like, he, almost his entire family is roasting him and calling his dreams stupid. By that time, like. Being a plumber isn't really that bad of a profession, so I don't really kind of get that, but I guess they have to kind of like... That's one of the ways they gotta kind of push the story forward, I guess, is make Mario feel like a failure to his family and all that. I've seen a lot of online criticism of the movie is like, oh man, they emasculated Mario, like they, they took away his manhood, they made him into a loser, everyone's always saying, oh, you're so short, you're so tiny, you're so, you, you, you can't do anything right, and then here Peach is played as like, oh, she's the perfect woman, she's the girl boss, and like, she, she's got all this shit on lockdown, and it's like, it's a fish out of water story. They do prove that in the real world, Mario is still pretty athletic and pretty good at what he does and he's pretty brave and all that it's just when he's in the mushroom kingdom of course it's like he's not gonna know how any of the logic or rules of the world and how that shit like how any of that works it's like of course there's it's that's gonna be played up for laughs that, that's typical of a fish out of water experience So, I don't know. I have I have no qualms with that. Mario wins in the end, as if that's like any surprise. Um, him and Luigi both share a moment and kick Bowser's ass and like go fucking Super Saiyan on everyone with the Power Star. So that's the big payoff: is Mario finally redeems himself in his family's eyes and kicks Bowser's ass and his brother believes in him and the entire thing was Mario wants to save his brother who got like they're they're close to each other I don't know I I did like the dynamic that Mario and Luigi had in this movie they're brothers that stick by each other. And they're there for each other when they need it. 
And it wasn't Mario like, oh, I have to impress Peach. His 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 brain was always, I have to save Luigi. I have to save Luigi. I have to save my brother. I gotta find my brother. I gotta save my brother. I'm coming with you. No matter what, because I gotta save my brother. That's good. All the set pieces they had throughout the movie, I said they have Bobomb Battlefield. They have the Sand Kingdom from Mario Odyssey. They have, uh... I don't know the world's particular name within Super Mario World, but I believe the mountains that were in that were a reference to the Donut Mountains or something in Super Mario World. I thought the Fire Flower Field was... One of my favorite shots. It's just really pretty. And a lot of people are saying, the critics about this movie, like, Oh, the colors. Ooh, it's such a colorful distract. It's like... I, I guess they can't appreciate things for just looking really good, even if they don't like the plot. Like, the movie looks amazing. I was worried Illumination would sheep out. And it would be very generic and boring looking. But no, actual passion was put into this movie. They knew they were handling something that they couldn't cheap out on, and everything looked. Every scene looked great. I can't say there was any ugly parts of this movie. It really went above and beyond for an Illumination film. Bowser's song about Peach that plays at least two times is yeah it's not good it's, it's no to it's no tenacious d song so sorry that was a big disappointment but bowser was still a funny character very threatening too they didn't downplay that he was actually uh, very capable of murdering everyone he beats the fucking shit out of mario and Donkey Kong, who also manages to beat the shit out of Mario. Until, you know, Mario gets the cat suit and then, like, has cat like reflexes and kicks Donkey Kong's ass. Um. He has no problem kicking Donkey Kong's ass. So, so Bowser is a clear threat. He is a psychopath. He. He just, like, literally wanted to murder everyone in front of Princess Peach during their wedding. He's gonna do a little, uh, ritual sacrifice by just dipping everyone in cave, uh, cages into lava, like, right then and there. And that was like, yeah, that's pretty fucked up. Of course, he, he didn't get to go through with it. It didn't work. But, um... That reminds me of something else. Shy Guys were in the movie. I don't know if we saw any promotional material where Shy Guys were confirmed to be in the movie. But they appeared in even a snippet and... They are actually kind of creepy the way that they appeared. <laughs> they are who captures Luigi. I really... Really loved the whole Darklands Luigi segment. Where, you know, Mario and Luigi get separated in the warp pipe, and uh, Luigi ends up in Bowser's territory and all that. And the dry bones appear, and... I want to say, if I was a kid, maybe I would be pretty afraid of that scene. Like, I'd probably kind of be afraid of the dry bones, because the way they portrayed the dry bones was actually pretty cool. As an adult, I'm like, oh, hell yeah. This is, like, a little bit creepy enough that it's like... I know they're cartoon characters. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I, I just feel like maybe, maybe little actual young young kids might actually find that scene a little bit scary in the way that the shy guys appear too. They're played off as more of a scary enemy. With, but one of my disappointments was that Booze didn't appear at all in the movie. King Boo was there, but. He also, he did, he looks nothing like the Luigi's Mansion King Boo. He doesn't have the sunken in, like, black shade over his, uh, face with his, like, ominous purple eyes. 
He just looks like an overinflated Boo. And he looks really weird and out of place. But he appears with King Babom at Bowser's wedding. And no PD piranha, but there is like a very large piranha plant. I don't it's not PD, so I don't I don't, I don't know. So I'm trying to wonder why like, why weren't the Goombas allowed to really have a presence in the movie outside of a few scenes where they appear but ultimately don't do anything and then also boos just aren't in the movie at all either I'm kind of like wondering if that's like a global market thing where it's like oh well you can't show ghosts in uh, this country and whatnot so we're gonna have King Boo in the American version, but maybe he's removed in the version that they're sending overseas to a country that probably doesn't allow such a thing. Maybe this was a, 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 choi a choice that they had to make that would, you know, make sure that the movie could make uh, money overseas. That, that tends to be a thing that happens, huh? But yeah, um, they get to the... One of the weirdest parts of the movie is like when they get to the Kong Kingdom. AKA the Jungle Kingdom, the, the Donkey Kong Country. There's a fucking segment where they just play Take On Me. And that's the part where it's like... They do have pop songs within the movie. And I feel like the movie could have gone without like these weird segments where they just had to have a recognizable song for the parent or two. Uh, thank you for the take care of yourself, Redeem. Let me... Uh... Yeah, okay, what was I saying? Take on me, it's like... Oh, this song is so unfitting, why, why is it playing at this part? <laughs> It's illustrating that the Kong Kingdom is like a a nation of kart racers and shit. It's a uh, foreshadowing the whole Mario Kart portion of the movie where they're going to have like the giant drag race and get ambushed by Bowser and then like a bunch of shit happens. And then we get to learn the blue shell origins, which is a uh, there's a flying paratroopa that is in the blue shell itself. And when I saw him on the fucking poster, I immediately knew, oh hey, he, he, he they, they aren't, they aren't gonna put some fucking random mook, Koopa Troopa, on the poster if he's not gonna have like a big part at some point in the movie. And they pulled that. He fucking does the blue shell thing exactly, and nearly kills Donkey Kong and Mario. But of course they're not gonna die. But the whole Mario Kart portion of the movie was honestly cute in my opinion. How it references how you build the carts in Mario Kart 8 too. And the whole girl boss Peach outfit was just her and her motorcycle outfit that, you know, is a part of Mario Kart anyways, so... <laughs> that ain't no censorship or anything. She watches Donkey Kong and Mario, quote-unquote, get killed. And, uh, <clears throat> Then they get eaten by a giant eel, which is unfortunately not modeled after the Mario Kart 64 eel. I mean, no, no, not the Mario 64 eel, I meant. Not the Mario Kart 64. I'm sorry, someone just started mowing their lawn outside, so... <laughs> fucking goddammit. I can't even hear myself think clearly now. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you just tuned in, I am talking about the Mario movie and spoilers and all that, so please, uh... If you haven't seen the movie yet and want to see, see it, just mute it, but you know, it's a, it's a Mario movie. The plot doesn't have to be big and amazing, it just has to be Mario. A simple telling of Mario, and that's what it was. That's all I ever wanted out of it. Great movie. 
Anyways, they get eaten by a giant eel, because they fall into the sea and all that. Then they escape the giant eel, of course, in a reference to Donkey Kong Country Returns. Those fucking barrel blast levels where DK is riding on a barrel. So that, it had little nods to fucking Donkey Kong Country in it. You get to see Diddy Kong. You get to see... Uh, <clears throat> what, what, why am I forgetting her name? What, I did, okay, fucking... I'm sorry, this fucking lawnmower asshole outside. Fucking goddamn it. You get to see Diddy Kong. You get to see Dixie Kong. And even Chunky Kong is there. Um, if there were any other Kongs, I didn't notice them in the crowd. I don't think I saw Funky Kong, but I think he is in the movie, just he doesn't have any spoken parts. And if he appears, it's like very, like, blink and you miss it. I think some people found him in stills. Can't remember. But, um... Yeah, Chunky. He, he's there, but Tiny Kong wasn't anywhere to be seen. Nor was Lanky. Uh, they did have the DK rap in the, the movie, when Donkey Kong appears, but it's like, DK, Donkey Kong, DK, so it's not like the actual rap, it's like just more of like the, the one verse of like, just DK and his name being repeated as like they were entering a wrestling, uh, a wrestling arena and all that, and they have their theme songs and everything. DK is very flashy, he's very showboaty. Anyways, the fun, funny thing about that is in the post credits, the DK rap is credited, but it's credited as the DK rap from Donkey Kong 64. Grant Kirkhope is nowhere in the credits. He is not credited. Even his, uh, Grant Kirkhope on Twitter is very disappointed that his name was omitted from the credits, and yeah, that kind of fucking sucks. That that is him singing the song, isn't it? He did make the song, so it always sucks to see someone hasn't been properly credited, and that's been happening with a lot of Hollywood movies as of late. Just uh, reminds me of how many animated movies where people were excited to see their names in the credit of the movie they worked for, and then the studio's like, Yeah, you didn't do enough cr uh, work to even earn being credited in the credits. And it's like, that's kind of fucked up. Hopefully, hopefully in the, uh, the DVD, Blu-ray, and digital releases of the movie, they probably put his name in and credit him for the song that he made, but I don't know. Legal legalities and legalities are weird like that, so not much you could do at this point. I'm still thinking, do I want to own this movie? Which I think, yeah, I probably will just buy it. I'm hoping it, it has some good extras or whatever, and I, I honestly do hope we are going to get a sequel. Surely this is going to do well enough that we get a sequel. It has to do well enough that we get a sequel. It's a fucking Mario movie. I can't see this movie bombing or failing. Like, I think it's already tripled the amount of money that the, the first Sonic movie made on its debut. They're projecting pretty high for this one, and they might reach it. Who knows? I, I have faith it will, it will do pretty good. I would like to see another movie. What will they do with another movie? I don't know. Maybe the Koopalines. Maybe Wario. Maybe a new original uh, big bad guy. Maybe go to Daisy's Kingdom. They imply that there's galaxies out there, so maybe Super Mario Galaxy based Bowser Jr. 
maybe extended Nintendo universe so they could do Zelda or like Mario going to different worlds. Who knows? I, I, that last one sounds like a cool idea on paper, but it would probably be a little bit lame, I guess, to do the whole like extended universe thing already, where I feel like there's still things to explore within Mario. There is a post credit scene to the movie. We just see a Yoshi egg in Boston, in the Boston sewers uh, hatching, so... That's about it. <laughs> the the mid credit scene... There's also one, too. Uh, I haven't talked about that part of the movie yet, but... Uh, Bowser gets uh, force-fed a mini mushroom and put in a jar once he's defeated. <laughs> Maybe a callback to the, the Super Mario Super Mario 3D world and how he put the little uh, pixie women in the cum jar. And at the end of the movie, he gets put in the cum jar. And, uh, apparently, Peach keeps him in a cage. A tiny little bird cage in the castle as a pet. So uh, he gets reduced to being a dragon dildo. <laughs> Oh god. I, I told one of my friends that and they said they're gonna fucking draw that. <laughs> uh, the generacy. The generacy! My fucked up jokes. So I, I don't know if I could see Bowser being the main villain of the next movie. Uh, then, if they bring in the Koopalines and Bowser Jr., then I could totally see that, but I kind of would like to see Wario be the villain of the next movie. Or at least have some part in the movie. But I feel like when you're gonna have a, another movie, you always have to kind of have a new, a new villain and keep it refreshing. Maybe, I don't know, maybe make Bowser a good guy next time around? Because that's always a, a thing in Mario games is... He's a bad guy, but he's not necessarily a bad guy. He has his... He, he's just very strong fast in his head. Uh, in this movie, of course, he, he was pretty kind of fucked up, so he actually was going to kill everyone. Which, uh, he never really accomplished that in any of the games. So, maybe there's a little bit more of a hard time redeeming that factor. It's hard to see where they could go with a sequel, but... I know they don't like using any of the RPG games... ...as canon, which is kind of funny, because, like... ...Shy Guys are never really present in mainline Mario games. They're usually relegated to being Yoshi game villains or spin-offs, or Mario parties, or Mario Karts and stuff. You never really see them as actual enemies within a mainline Mario game. So seeing them in the movie, in a snippet even... Kinda weird. What other things were spoilery that I should mention? Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Baby Mario and Baby Luigi make an appearance in the movie. Through a flashback, of course. Baby Peach too, so... <laughs> they snuck that in there. That, that... That was cute. Um, Peach apparently doesn't know where the fuck she came from. She could be from the human world. She's referred to as a human. She was apparently, like... She came to the uh, the Mushroom Kingdom as a baby and was raised by toads. Which is why she's the, the girl boss archetype, where it's like, oh, she just kind of grew up here, so she kind of knows how, how, how everything works. That's why she's so good at it all, and like she's more of a guiding hand to Mario, teaching him the ropes of like, yeah, that makes sense. That's like fucking... She's the Tarzan of this world. <laughs> of course she's going to be good at being Tarzan. Like I said, fish out of water with Mario. You don't know how this shit works, but Peach was raised around this shit, so of course she's gonna know how it works. There was a fucked up part, too, where Bowser just straight up, like, 
breathes fire and kills a Koopa, I, I mean a Koopa Troopa, and turns it into a Dry Bones right on the spot. And it's played for comedic effect, but like, that's kind of fucked up too. <laughs> the Dry Bones scene with Luigi though, like, I, I really like that scene. That still is a really fucking good, like, how ravenous and like, relentless they made those fucking things was... As I said, if I was a little kid watching that, I would have been afraid. <laughs> Maybe it would have been a scene that stuck me. You know, slightly scary thing that's not supposed to be in a movie that's necessarily, like, you know. It's kind of like maybe a large Marge kind of situation, but not as scary as a large Marge from a Pee Wee's Big Adventure. There was a Luma in the movie. We did see that in a movie trailer, though. So, I think maybe if there is a sequel, it's gonna be Mario Galaxy based. <laughs> and speaking of the Luma, and the whole jail scene where they're all hanging in cages above lava and all that, there were Goombas in cages too, so. I think maybe this implies that the Goombas were their own people and Bowser kind of enslaved them and like any that didn't want to serve as a part of his army maybe got locked up and sent to jail. Who, who knows why they were locked up for their crimes. Very... raises many questions. But also, isn't Goomba technically kind of a slur against Italians? Like... So it's like, why there, that weird video of Chris, Pat, Chris Pratt exists where he's going, I love stomping on G Koopas. Like, he wanted to say Goombas, but like, he's like, wait a second, that's a slur. And like, there's like a fucking, there's a relentless army on Twitter that hates Chris Pratt and wants to cancel him, I've, I've grown to learn. And like, they stop at nothing, like keep trying to like find reasons to cancel Chris Pratt and they keep failing over and over again it's honestly pretty funny was there anything else I wanted to talk about I think I we're going on nearly two hours of me just sitting here talking about the Mario movie yeah uh, I can't think of anything else that was really spoilery that I feel like I should maybe talk about. I know I said King Boo, King Bob bomb were a part of the wedding. There was like a little, everyone got a, like, like, ooh, Fire DK, we got to see Fire DK. That was just like a temporary little thing that wasn't any like big part of the movie and whatnot. Um, we get to see Ice Princess Peach. Toad hides a little ice flower in her bouquet, and as the wedding is happening, she touches it, becomes uh, Ice Peach, and just starts like fucking blasting everyone and freezes Bowser in place, and uh, stupidly like takes a takes one of the Koopa Troopa weapons, lights it on fire, and throws it at King Babom. Lights his fuse. He starts freaking out. Then he fucking explodes and blows up the entire audience. But then Peach, like, fucked up, because, like, uh, she gets caught in the explosion, so... Not so invincible and girl bossy now, huh, Peach? But yeah, I... I don't mind when Peach is able to... actually do things. And... be able to... you know, actually stand her own ground. That happens plenty of times in Mario games. You get to play as Peach in some Mario games. She was just kind of a part of the group in the old Mario cartoons too. She's, she's not always just, you know, people have this idea that Peach is always just a damsel in distress that sits around and can't fucking do shit. And you know, it really depends on the kind of era of Mario media you consume. Because everyone has a different idea of what Peach is, and maybe more in modern games, she has kind of become a damsel in distress. 
But the older games, Mario 2, aka Mario USA, you still got to play as Peach. It may have been a dream, but still, you got to play as Peach. Uh, I'm sure a lot of Mario games within fucking... I want to say the GameCube era and the Wii era, she was more of a damsel, and then you get to the modern era, where you're able to still play as Peach on a Super Mario World, and she's capable of doing everything else everyone else is doing, the same, you know, parkour, jumping around, power-ups, blocks, and all that, so we know she's capable of doing all this stuff, just I guess no one played those games. <laughs> so... There's always uh, Super Princess Peach for the DS too, but we don't like to talk about that one, but technically, like... <laughs> that's famously used as an example of like, oh, uh, Peach is such a girly character, uh. She's using her PMS to go save Mario. She's a damsel in distress. I don't know. Fucking... Such the low... Low hanging fruit to criticize about the Mario, like the damsel in distress trope. Uh, I don't think Mario is really a good one to use. I think it's just like cheap and easy. Most people that use it don't even, you know, really consume any media that has Mario. They don't even know what the fuck they're talking about half the time. Much like all these film critics we just looked at, talking about the fucking Super Mario Bros. movie. So yeah, um, anyways, once Peach fucks up the entire, uh, wedding. Bowser the entire time has been super jealous over Mario, because he's like, I want to marry Peach. And she knows, like, she's traveling around with a, a human guy, and she, he's, like, he's he's showing jealousy the entire time, and he's being possessive of Peach. And he doesn't get what he wants in the end, so he's like, alright, fuck it, I'm just gonna blow up the Mushroom Kingdom. He launches a giant-ass bonsai bill, Mario does his uh, superhero thing, and uh, somehow gets it into a warp pipe. And then it causes a giant explosion within the warp pipe universe. Causes a massive suction to pull everything in. They're in Boston and the final battle takes place in Boston and all that. Mario and Luigi help each other out. They get the power star. They kick Bowser's ass. Mario has his big heroic moment when he's like having a fucking uh, breakdown. Um, Donkey Kong is getting bodied by Bowser. And uh, Peach is captured and all that. Mario saves the day in front of everyone. He makes a fan out of Spike, his own family. You know. It's got a... it's... I want to say it's a good ending. It kind of goes off of some, like, bullshit logic. Like, oh, yeah, a fucking... The giant explosion within the warp pipe managed to cause a vacuum that sucked everything in. Suddenly they're all back in Boston because we need a cool epic finale and all that. Like, there, there's some things like that that are just kind of like, yeah, okay, I'm not going to question it too much. It's it's a kid's movie. It's a Mario movie. It don't got to make too much sense. It, it doesn't have to be deep. It's just got to be enjoyable. And that's what I want out of a Mario movie. I want it to be... Like a Mario video game, I want it to be enjoyable. That's about it. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't want some giant grandiose adventure where the characters had no relation to how the video games play. That I <laughs> let me let me word this as carefully as I can without sounding like an idiot myself, which I'm pretty sure I have already failed that. I wanted Mario to be Mario, I wanted Luigi to be Luigi, I wanted Bowser to be Bowser, I wanted Peach to be Peach, I wanted Donkey Kong to be Donkey Kong, and I feel like that that all just kind of worked. It, it just worked. 
They reference all kinds of Nintendo properties. They got the Punch-Out Pizzeria. They got Spike from Wrecking Crew. Mario Plays, Kid Icarus. They got an R-Wing on top of the TV in Mario's room. And they have a cool, uh, they have a cute little segment where Mario's actually doing some platforming in the real world. And he jumps over a fence and grabs onto a pole and slides down. And it's like, it's a pole outside of a, a restaurant called Castle Burger in the shape of an actual castle from, you know, the fucking Mario 1. That was a cute little detail. I, I like that a lot. Luigi gets a call from a call on their phone. That, I mean, Luigi gets a call on his phone, and the ringtone is the GameCube startup sound. And the little portrait on the phone is of a me. They even have the the Mario Donkey Kong arcade game in the background, but they're using bootleg characters since Mar it would make no sense for Mario to actually exist within a video game within his own universe if this is a, a universe based off of a video game. So they, they, they thought that through too. And I'm pretty sure there's tons of other little references I didn't see within my first viewing and I definitely do look forward to like maybe like sitting down watching one of those fucking Game Explain videos like every reference in the Mario movie and seeing like what did I miss? I know there's also a Duck Hunt reference uh, within the Punch-Out Pizzeria. I don't, know, I don't necessarily feel like all those Easter eggs are a bad thing to have. I just feel like these dumb critics feel like they're left out that they don't understand something. As I said, complaining that a movie fulfills fan expectations is that a sign of a bad movie? I don't think so. If the fans love it more than professional critics love it, then I think it's actually doing a, be a better job at being a movie than what the critics would actually want out of it. Like I said earlier, <laughs> Mario's not 500 pounds. He's not in a wheelchair. What what did they want? <laughs> it's Mario. It don't gotta be anything other than Mario. Okay, I think uh, that's about a, a enough of the spoiler talk. I enjoyed the movie a lot. Well, I still feel like that. Maybe later today, a few days from now. I don't know, I'm kind of tempted to go see it in movie theaters again. But... We'll see if I actually feel up to doing that. Because I know I, I definitely need to be streaming more. I need to... I need to draw stuff. I need to focus on stuff. I probably definitely will buy it. It gives me a lot of hope for Nintendo movies going forward. And I really am surprised that Illumination, like I said, like when it was first announced it was Illumination making this movie, I came to the worst conclusion immediately that this would be an awful, awful, terrible adaption of Mario. And seeing this movie, I was wrong. It was great. Is everything I would have wanted out of a Mario movie, so. Color me surprised. It just kind of makes me think that, you know, when you're an artist, sometimes you just gotta, like, take a bad job and keep doing a bunch of bad jobs until you can eventually afford to do the job that you want to do. Being an artist. You could draw like a thousand bad drawings before you even get the one good drawing. And maybe just apply that to Illumination here where it's like... They made a bunch of cheap movies that people don't necessarily like or fondly remember. But they did well enough with normie audiences that... Maybe finally just... Finally... They got to a movie that they 
actually cared about and did an exceptionally good job at it. Whether that's just Miyamoto breathing down their necks, preventing them from not being cheap in doing this stuff, who knows, but uh... I like to think that they're actually kind of... maybe... Mm. They're definitely surpassing Disney, I think, right now with their animated movies. <laughs> Disney animated movies have not been hitting the same... Uh, Box office bomb after box office bomb. No one's happy with the state of Disney right now. DreamWorks and Illumination. Putting some good stuff out there, honestly. I know the meme is to hate minions. But... I don't know. I don't necessarily think I hate minions or am offended by minions. It's just not for me, and I just leave it up as that. I, I, I kind of have a soft spot for the Despicable Me movie, like the first one and all that, before the minions kind of hijack the show. Because I always do like those uh, movies that are like a, oh, villain, but they're not necessarily like evil, evil, like I gotta kill everyone evil. They're just a bad guy, but they're not a bad guy. Same with Wreck-It Ralph. That's why I liked Wreck-It Ralph a lot. I, I like characters that are bad guys, but not actually bad. It's a, it's a trope I like a lot. And like me here, you see me. I'm a monster. Most would assume I'm evil. Maybe I am. I am very capable of doing some evil stuff. Alas. I just want to I just want I just want to be in my house all day playing video games. I don't want to do any I don't want to fight anyone. I don't want to do anything fucked up. I just want to appreciate cool video games. Just leave me alone. Don't bother me and I, you know, won't cave your face in. Thinking, thinking, thinking. I think I've said everything that I want to say. If you aren't insane from the Mario Artist Monkey music, congratulations. <laughs> you sat through this song for like nearly two hours. <laughs> this is perfect brain rot music. Anyways, yeah. Um... This discussion has been twice as long, maybe even three times as long than it needed to be. I just kind of wanted to do a little bit of a stream today. Talk about the Mario movie and how I felt, because I have been looking forward to this movie. At first for bad reasons, and then when I saw the trailers, I, I was like, okay, no, I'm actually legitimately interested in this movie. It looks like they're actually doing a good job, and yeah, they did a great job. They did great. These critics are kind of just stupid. Um, and, you know, a lot of the negativity I'm seeing online is probably just Sonic fans that want Sonic to have a win for once, so... <laughs> they're, they're reviving the old uh, Mario vs. Sonic debate, and it's just like... I don't know. To me, it's no contest. The Mario movie wins. Sonic movies, they're okay. It's like comparing Super Mario Galaxy to Sonic 06, if you want to compare the first Sonic movie to the first uh, Mario movie. But if you want to compare Sonic 2 to the Mario movie, then maybe it's more of a Sonic Heroes, uh, Sonic Heroes versus Mario Sunshine. If that makes any sense. 
they got their charms, I understand. Uh, Sonic fans want to see Sonic win at something. Uh, fans of the Blue Blur haven't been eating good for quite a long time. And I think their standards have kind of lowered. But if you're a Mario fan, Mario always kind of hits just right. Can you really think of a bad Mario game? In most cases, no. There's Mario sport games, but even those have their fans. Me personally, I don't care if it's a sport game. Well, I don't care if Mario's in a sport game, because I have no interest in sports, so I'm not going to play it anyways. Anyways. Yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about it. I highly recommend the movie. If you're still on the fence about seeing it, go check it out. I think you'll like it. You know, don't expect too much out of it. Don't expect, like, fine art. Don't expect, uh, the most amazing movie ever. If you want a Mario movie, you can't go wrong with this. Just go see it. <laughs> uh... Giving a rating and all that. I don't know. That's stupid. I, I just I just feel like you like something or you hate something Why should I bog it down with like a, a 1 through 10 or like a 4 out of 5 star kind of review? I'm just gonna say I recommend it go see it anyways That's about it for the discussion of the Mario movie so Is there anything else I wanted to share? Nah, I think that's about everything I had. Okay. So no video games today, but maybe this weekend I'll have something for you guys, so... I'll see ya when I see ya. Thank you for watching. Thank you for lurking. Thank you for watching the VODs on YouTube and Twitch. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Take care. Have a good night. Go see that fucking Mario movie. <laughs> don't listen to stupid critics online. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> bye bye. What are you still doing here? Go see the fucking Mario movie. Get out. Go see the fucking Mario movie right now or else. <laughs> Go see the Mario movie. Go see the fucking Mario movie. <laughs>